What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over my guide for Genghis Khan in Rise of Kingdoms. Okay, Khan is a commander that I get questions about all of the time and there's a couple of good reasons why. But first, Okay, so Khan is the third Wheel of Fortune commander that comes into your kingdom in Rise of Kingdoms. The first is Richard, then Esong. Both of those are very good legendary commanders that I think most players should or could invest in, regardless of how much you're spending in the game, how long you're playing the game, things of that nature. Both are great commanders. Then you see Khan come around the same time as Saladin, right? Saladin is a Mightiest Governor Cavalry Commander. He's one of the most contested and fought for Mightiest Governor Commanders in the game. And then after Khan's wheel, you see Alexander, who's also an incredible Wheel of Fortune commander. So with all of these great legendaries coming out around the same time as Genghis Khan, I think a lot of players see him and assume maybe he's in the same class of legendary as all of those. Now I'm here to tell you that I think unfortunately Khan doesn't really quite stack up to the peers that he is launched with. Khan sort of does one or two things very, very well, and then does mostly everything else kind of average or poorly. And we're going to get into that when we go over the skills for Genghis Khan. But I just want to preface all of this by saying that I think Khan is a legendary commander that you should be looking to invest in if you are a medium to high spender. And the reason for that is because again, Khan has a specific role that makes him very, very powerful for that role. However, it's a role that really is most effectively uh, accomplished by a heavy spender who can, you know, afford to um, uh, heal their hospitals very quickly, speed it up, etc. And so I want you guys to keep that in mind because I know a lot of you don't finish the video all the way to the end and you're just here for investment advice. I think if you're all free to play or a low spender maybe Khan is not the right legendary for you and let's talk about his skills and his talents and then we'll kind of figure out why so first Khan is a cavalry skill commander the versatility tree is useless don't even look at that at all we have other cavalry skill commanders in this game that come out before Khan such as Minamoto so this is really interesting and we can draw some parallels between these two commanders so uh, let's take a look at Genghis Khan's first skill it's called chosen one now this this is important this is the cheapest active skill in the entire game by 50 rage most legendary commanders well really most commanders in the game have a rage requirement of 1000 this is 950 which is five percent less now we're going to talk a little bit more about rage in a minute because it comes into play with his second skill and as well as his talent trees but the thing that you have to know about chosen one is that it's a cheaper active skill with a 1700 single target damage factor this is a very straightforward vanilla active skill it doesn't do any buffs or debuffs it doesn't do any aoe or any sort of craziness like that it's literally just one target takes big damage and that's it now we can compare khan to like i said minamoto before minamoto is also uh his active skill is a single target damage factor now there's a little bit of randomness involved with this active skill um even if you know when he's expertise there's a little bit less randomness but even before he is expertise there's a 50 percent chance that he's going to deal uh, significantly more damage with this active skill than genghis khan now it does cost slightly more rage however it's worth noting that i think on average uh, minamoto's active skill is actually better than genghis khan's for single target damage factor so keep that in mind so what we're seeing with genghis khan right now um and, and you know obviously the the perk of this is that there's no randomness it's just you just hit them like a truck over and over and over again. Uh, Minamoto, there's a little bit of randomness involved, but over the course of a battle, you're going to be dealing more damage. Okay. So I think for some players, the consistency of Khan is a bit more attractive than Minamoto. So what we're taking away from this is that it's a little bit cheaper, but it's just not as good as some other active skills in the legendary tier for cavalry. Even if you look at somebody like Tao Tao or Saladin, they're dealing slightly less damage than this, but they're also buffing or debuffing. And I think that's a bit more valuable than just damage factors. So let's take a look at his second skill. This is called Cyclone of the Steps. This is a passive skill and it says rage cost for using an active skill is lowered by a hundred cavalry units led by this commander gain 15 percent increased march speed if actively attacked the march speed buff is removed and march speed is further reduced by 10 percent so 
this is adding on to the fact that rage is a key component for Genghis Khan's usability in rise of kingdoms. So what we're seeing here is that active skill rage requirement goes down by a hundred, which means that this active skill is going to pop off when your commander has 850 rage, which is 15% faster than the first skill is going to go off for any normal legendary. And some legendaries even cost more than a thousand rage. If you're looking at somebody like Edward, right? So you're going to get, you're basically getting a, a huge discount on that active skill and because of this you kind of want to have Khan as that primary commander because the rage requirement that is used for your army is the rage requirement of the primary commander so for, for example if Genghis Khan has a 950 rage requirement but he's your secondary commander uh you would think that his active skill would actually go off first because your primary commander let's say it's Minamoto has a 1000 rage requirement however that's not how it works right so again if you have a Minamoto primary Genghis Khan secondary even though Genghis Khan's active skill costs 50 less it's still gonna pop off after Minamoto's because Minamoto's rage requirement is what's being used when calculating when active skills go off for that specific army so because the active skill is cheaper on Khan uh, you're going to want to have him as your primary for most of the instances where you would want to actually use Khan now that is compounded by the fact that his second skill reduces that rage cost even further and he has the skill tree so the skill talent tree and I'll show you talent builds later but we have what's known as a rage engine in the talent tree for skill so rejuvenate and and you have feral nature you also can come, up, can come up here and get undying fury you have burning blood all of these talents are uh, giving you extra rage anytime that either you do a normal attack or a skill attack or anything like that right and especially with rejuvenate every time Khan uses a skill he gains that rage anytime that the secondary uses a skill he gains that rage and since he's going to pop off that act active skill sooner than any other commander uh you're going to start that range engine sooner than anybody else in the entire game and that is what makes Genghis Khan super powerful however there's still some drawbacks so let's get back to his skills let's look at Khan's third skill it's called nomadic empire and it says when troops led by this commander consist of only cavalry and more than 70 percent of units remain they deal 30 percent increased damage now at five points this is crazy good however you have to a have only cavalry and b you have to stay above 70 percent which is kind of hard for Genghis Khan because he's sort of what's known as a glass cannon and I'm gonna and I'm gonna explain that in just a second now of course Lilith has never officially published the damage formula but it's to my knowledge that this 30 percent damage bonus is for normal attacks counter attacks and skill attacks which means that all damage for your march is buffed by 30 percent as long as you're above 70 percent with calves which is really really powerful the problem is again it's so hard to stay above 70 percent with Khan. let's look at his fourth skill and then we're going to wrap up his skills and talk about what what he's good at and what he's missing his fourth skill says military lifestyle it's a passive and then it says when troops led by this commander consist of only cavalry so that's again that's two skills that require only cavalry and fewer than 50 percent of units remain they deal 30% increased skill damage and gain an extra 25 rage when attacked. So this skill is interesting. You have another built-in rage engine here, which is uh, astonishing, really good. And you're dealing way more skill damage as well. Now you are losing this buff because you're going to be less than 70%. Uh, you're losing that, but you're still going to be doing way more skill damage. The problem with this is you pretty much never want to have a con on the field that is less than 50 percent uh and the reason is because of the glaringly obvious flaw that Genghis Khan has and maybe you've picked up on this but all four of his skills lack stats for your cavalry there's nothing here none of these skills give you attack defense health anything like that now you do get damage bonuses right which is nice but when it comes to taking damage you can't take damage you, you just simply cannot do it by not having any baked in stats for Genghis Khan the odds are that the enemy that you're attacking with Khan probably has more stats than you which means that you're really going to be taking a beating if you uh if you aren't as powerful as the person you're fighting or if you're getting swarmed now this isn't the end of the world for Khan but a lot of players have realized this with Khan and the fact that he is in fact a glass cannon so essentially if you're not familiar with that term it means that he can deal massive damage like a cannon 
but the cannon is made of glass, meaning it can't really take any damage in return. So Genghis Khan, what we're seeing here with his stats is that he is going to deal a tremendous amount of single target damage, but there's no other bells or bells and whistles. He has no sustainability. He's just going to hit one thing really, really hard, but he's probably going to be sent to the hospital pretty quickly. Ooh, we getting golden chess boys. So the trick with Genghis Khan is to be in short fights where you just deal burst damage to a single army and that's it. Let's take a look at some talent builds and I'm going to show you my Minamoto because he's level 60. They have the same talent tree. So nothing really changes. Now in general, you probably want to go all the way to the end of the skill tree because you want to capitalize on the fact that you're going to be launching out your skill attacks sooner than the enemy and more often than the enemy because of the rage engine. So you obviously want to get rejuvenate and you want to get feral nature. You also get a really nice benefit with clarity here because your secondary commander is going to deal an extra 6% skill damage. But at the peak of this rage regeneration cycle, it's probable that Khan is probably going to hit an active skill during the time that clarity goes off as well. Don't quote me on that. It, it may be difficult to reach that point, but clarity is a really good talent as well you also have burning blood in here which is great now i did come up here and i grabbed undying fury for that additional rage again we want all the rage possible we just want to min max with rage regeneration with Genghis khan because that's really what he does best now i made my way up here to get emblazoned shield to reduce the skill damage that you take by 12 percent because like i said it's difficult for him to take any sort of damage at all 12 percent reduction is nice the problem is he's still going to be squishy whether or not you get this. So ultimately you can remove emblazoned shield. If you want, you could put those points somewhere like naked rage, where you're going to get even more skill damage at the cost of taking more skill damage, which again, you're probably going to get uh, taken down pretty quickly. Anyway, you could and of course get equestrian excellence. If you want that extra March speed uh, to compensate for the fact that if you do get caught out in the open field, uh, Khan is going to lose his March speed buff and he's going to be pretty slow, which is not good. Now, this is an interesting build that you could try in the instance where you're able to bring your Khan back to your city very quickly and very easily. The reason for this is because you still get the rage engine from rejuvenate. However, you get rally and cry up here, which increases all damage by 15% during the first 10 seconds after entering battle. And we've already established that Khan is going to be launching those skill attacks really, really soon in battle, which means he's going to be dealing a lot of skill damage in those first 10 seconds because of this and the fact that he'll be over 70%. So with this build, you could do big burst damage. And then you want to go back to your city because you want to, after that 10 seconds is up, you pretty much want to go back retreat, refresh above 70% and then go back out and fight. Um, this that's kind of the only instance where i would really recommend maxing the uh the skill tree of course if you do this you can take the two points out of latent power you don't need the additional skill damage you could put them somewhere like in question excellence or you could maybe put them in naked rage that way you get uh you know a little bit more skill damage in those first 15 or 10 seconds finally this is another build that you could do this is going to reduce the enemy attack by 20 percent it's only for two seconds so that's not that crazy again you want to remove the three points from latent power this is my minamoto who does deal uh it, it, additional skill damage so i would remove these three and maybe put them in like charge or again maybe naked rage and with both of these obviously you can take away the one point in peacekeeping because he doesn't have the peacekeeping tree so you'll have an extra point to play with ultimately though this is probably your best option unless you're going to be like i said retreating immediately after those first 10 seconds because this really capitalizes on the rage regeneration and you take less skill damage now let's talk about some commander pairs for khan now like i said you're going to want to have genghis khan as the primary because you're going to be launching off skill attacks just a little bit faster Minamoto is an obvious good pairing with Genghis Khan because he also does crazy good single target damage with his active skill. He also has the chance to increase the damage that they take by 30%. He also gives you some cavalry attack, which is something that Khan is honestly missing and some March speed, which he's missing. There's a lot of good things. Obviously, Cao Cao is another great option. He has some healing baked in and some more rage restoration, which is really, really good. You also get some attack just like Minamoto and single target damage factor with a nice debuff Cao Cao, another great pairing of course the classic pairing is with uh mr saladin over here uh saladin is a great pairing because um he also does single target damage factor he also does some debuffing uh with that healing effect reduction but he gives you a ton of stats he gives you 40 percent of stats and the 20 percent in cavalry defense is going to be crucial for your con in as far as survivability goes he also gives you a little bit of march speed which is nice he also has a little bit of tankiness in that third skill so there's a lot to love about a con saladin pairing and 
you know, this is something that you could do for a really daunting cavalry army out in the open field. It's worth noting that you could also do a Khan Cao Cao combo for counter rallies, right? And this is more for like early game, but when you're counter rallying, uh, you're really going to want to deal a ton of damage to a single target. Now, again, be very careful with this because this is going to be very squishy. So you need field presence to perform this counter rally, but a con primary Cao Cao secondary as a counter rally is going to ensure that you're dealing a ton of single target damage factor. Also, you're going to apply that 40% attack reduction to the rallied army often because it's a three second debuff and we talked about this khan's rage engine is crazy you're gonna be popping off cao cao's active skill often and it's really really powerful in this instance now there's a couple of commanders that you could pair that aren't really interested in cavalry that are still a great pairing you could do a khan esong as a as a pairing the problem with this is it is going to be the biggest red flag on the battlefield everyone's gonna be like look there's a Khan Esong. We should swarm it down because it's going to melt like butter. However, it is going to be popping off a ton of skill attacks, right? Khan is going to be pumping out single target skill attacks and Esong is going to be pumping out those AOEs. And this 50% skill damage bonus for Khan is going to be amazing. There's also some rage regeneration in here with Esong. So it's a nice combo, but again, there's no stats here. There's no defense. There's no health. There's no attack. All of those things you're missing, which means everyone that you're fighting is probably going to have more stats than you. This is what we would call a high risk, high reward pairing. If you're able to be left alone in the open field, then yeah, you can deal a ton of dar a ton of damage to a lot of targets. In the same vein, you could of course pick Sun Tzu. Now he's slightly more tanky, I guess, than Yi Song Ye. Obviously, he has a little bit of a smaller skill damage bonus, but he also has a better rage engine. So there's a, some synergy there as well. Again, I don't really recommend it. A, a, a player who's looking at a Khan Sun Tzu uh, combo is, is probably a free to play or low spender. And at that point, I would say just don't probably don't invest in Khan. Khan Osman is deceptively good as well because Osman vanilla damage factor. It's just boom, 1100. It's going to happen sooner because of Khan's primary. Then every time a skill attack goes off, you deal an extra 400. So it's like Khan hits them early boom sort of osman then you hit osman's primary skill for 1100 and then boom sort of osman and then like three seconds later you have the whole cycle repeating again which is just crazy so you're going to be dealing tons and tons and tons of skill damage and you get 10 percent more troops for the whole army so really great stuff here i like the combo it's interesting is it game breaking no freddy is an interesting combo you would want freddy to be expertise though so this is a combo that really is only going to be used by those really big spenders but he does do a lot of uh, extra damage factor here which is nice uh Khan provides the rage engine that freddy really needs you do also get that healing factor which is nice and you bring 15 percent more troops takeda is an interesting pairing you could absolutely do this and get away with it takeda is interested in like normal attack damage but there's a lot to love about takeda and it, he kind of uh, patches the holes in armor meaning that he's just a bit more tanky than uh than you know he's the he's the tank tankiness that Khan needs right which is really really nice that 40 percent cavalry uh defense is really really nice too with all of that being said Genghis Khan is still really really good in things like Soroli crisis Ian's ballads things where you're doing PVE content you know you're just fighting the the enemy AI and you're dealing tons of damage to that single target that is a place where Khan really does shine now I just realized I didn't talk about his expertise it literally just makes his first skill pop off more often it's there's a 30 percent chance that it happens but yeah, you really want Khan expertise if you're going to be using him, which is why I do recommend him to big spenders, right? Because you're going to be investing 690 legendary commander sculptures into him to really get your bang for your buck here. And I think if you um, are having trouble getting your hands on legendary commander sculptures, then maybe you want to avoid Genghis Khan. Now, before I forget, it's also worth noting that Chandra Gupta is a really good pairing for Genghis Khan. They're both cavalry skill commanders. And if your Chandra Gupta is expertise, then you're going to be dealing that two thousand damage factor when the blessed stacks are removed now i don't actually know if chandra gupta is still bugged i know when he came out like some of his skills with the stacks weren't working exactly as players thought or as they should have been working but he does give you 20 percent cavalry health which is going to be the most important stat for Genghis khan and he does give you some attack bonus with his active skill so khan primary chandra gupta secondary really powerful combo as well now here's a secret to Genghis Khan and you, this is important if you made it all the way to this part of the video you've earned this little secret okay Genghis Khan may be a hidden gem later in the game what do I mean by this well as we've seen Khan has the most broken rage engine in the game obviously right 
and the way that we can exploit this would be to pair him with cavalry commanders that uh give you tons of stats tons of skill damage all that good stuff right we've talked about some of those pairings already however as the game progresses it could be the case that in the future lilith releases a commander that is absolutely busted without a rage engine and by pairing him with Khan, uh, then we may see a combination emerge in the future where Genghis Khan can fully exploit some other broken commander that comes out. It would obviously have to be some sort of cavalry skill commander or something of the sort. So it's possible that in the future, more pairings come uh, become available for Khan that make him just insanely good. But for right now, given the uh, commanders that we have in the game, I just think that Khan is really great at one thing. And then after that one thing, you're really going to be using for PVE. And so because of that, I think that you probably don't want to invest in him if you are a free to play or a low spender. With that being said, guys, if you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, hopefully you guys will drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out the channel a ton. I'm not just saying that it really does help out these videos and their performance. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video. As always, my social media links are going to be in the description below. If you want to follow me, over on Twitter and on Instagram. I have my Discord down there as well as my Twitch stream. Finally, there's a link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks, and it's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. Seriously, playing with a keyboard and a mouse is a game changer, and I love it. Like I said, it's free. You've got nothing to lose. Go ahead and click that link and give it a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.